Hey guys, welcome. So today's gonna be it's just an extra training I thought I'd do today as it is Friday after all. And uh, what I wanted to share with you is the missing ingredient to success. So I did a post this morning sharing uh, a photo of my just woken up reading. So the slight edge. So if you have read this, then just drop a yes below, or if you haven't, just drop a no. But I've literally only read the first two chapters, but got some amazing takeaways so far. So I'm just gonna kind of share a couple of tips with you and things that I've read this morning to really help you in terms of what is that missing ingredient um, to be able to hit you know, that success levels and be able to make your business just go from here to skyrocket. So it's really interesting and it makes total sense. But there's definitely something that I know I was missing this ingredient um, myself. So it's really interesting. I'll be looking forward to reading the rest of it. I say I've literally read like that much. I've got all of that to go. So, so basically, hi Susan, nice to see you. If you are coming in live, then just make sure, yeah, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. And in case you don't know me, I'm not sure who I am. My name is Jenny Stevens and I help coach and train network marketers, direct sellers, affiliate marketers, learn, uh, teaching them how to build their business online using social media and digital marketing strategies. So you can really be able to have that endless flow of leads, customers and teammates coming out to you. So you don't have to bug your friends and family anymore. So, um, yeah, so I kind of have to say I'm going to be just taking you through some of the things that I have read this morning and really kind of was like a, oh, wow. So I really hope that it, sh that, you know, it helps you too. So basically it's like, what is this missing ingredient? You know, it's, I'm sure you're wondering what it is. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, choked on my own breath then. So what this um, what this first couple of chapters really talks about is how we consume information. You know, there's obviously loads of different courses out there. I've even obviously created my own course. So just listen, I've got any water and I don't. <coughs> I've created my own course and I'm, you know, going to be doing more of that as my journey goes through. But, you know, when you're building a business is you you need to be able to consume information to learn how to be able to do more things, which is exactly what I do. But there was some really interesting stuff in this that just helped make me see how things are slightly different. Have you ever bought a course and either not done anything with it or maybe you didn't get the results that you were hoping for? If you have, then just drop a one below. I've got lots of friends and I have bought courses. I've spent money that hundreds and hundreds of pounds before and I've really done nothing with it. And actually this missing ingredient helps explain a bit about that. So basically just taking in inf information is not enough. So, you know, you can consume information for as long as you live, but that's not going to be enough. To Susan saying, God, yes, one, 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 one. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, kind of learning and what I, I mean, I have definitely got caught in that learning mode before. So, have you ever got caught where you just learn all the time and don't actually then take any action? So, that's kind of partly to do with this. Um, so, really, you know, so you can learn how to do things until the cows come home. You can learn how to do things all you want, but it's not really going to mean jack you know it's going to mean squat really just from learning how to do things and i'll explain in a second so bear with me and make sure you stick around for this whole training to really understand what this uh, missing ingredient is so basically what you know you think about marketers leaders gurus that you follow even you know and i'm not a guru but i'm just me but you know even i share lots of things about things that that have worked for me but that doesn't mean it's necessarily going to work for you um and the reason i mean obviously you know things that work for me is we're all different i can't say right yes i have fantastic success with this i can't guarantee that you will too because i don't know you i don't know what action you're going to take i don't know what how much time you've got in your business i don't know what you're going to do with it and i think this is part of it so really people that are sharing what works for them Yes, you can take that in and you can learn something from it, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you unless you kind of 
learn about this missing ingredient. So basically is um, I've got some notes here. Obviously, I made some notes while I was going through these chapters just to kind of help you. So basically, you know, people try they try to follow along with the what works. But, you know, so they'll, you know, they'll buy courses, they'll go through trainings, they'll get mentorship, they'll get coaching. But what happens a lot of the time, and I think that's why network marketing has such a huge um, kind of dropout rate, is basically when people don't get that quantum leap, as it kind of describes it in this book, within, you know, 30 days, 60 days or 90 days is then people quit. So have you ever had that happen to you? Have you maybe brought in a team member and they quit so soon? Have you quit at something because you didn't have the results that you were expecting? I know I've definitely felt like quitting. I mean, I haven't uh, for a lot of stuff, especially, you know, in, since finding since finding the, the training that I had and had the help. Um, but it doesn't mean, you know, you're not expecting a certain result. And when you don't get that, you know, say that quantum leap is so many people will quit. So basically, no matter how much information there is out there, and you know, we are so lucky that we have a whole internet, you know, we've got the internet that is just full and brimming, full to the brim, overflowing with information. There's not a shortage of information of how to do things, but it is, it's this missing ingredient that's that's going to change things so no matter how great the information is no matter how good it is um if basically the consumer so the person that is consuming that information doesn't have the right kind of motivation or the right incentive or the right catalyst i had to actually look up what catalyst sort of really meant so i understood <laughs> Um, you know, if that person doesn't have that right catalyst, which is another word for motivation, incentive, things like that, to really allow them to apply what they learn effectively. And I think that's the thing there. You know, so if you don't have that 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 attitude, that motivation to apply what you're learning effectively, then success is going to basically not happen. It's going to elude. All right. So. Um, so in kind of an example that they used in this book was that it's a bit like eating the best food, you know, so maybe you've got the best food that is really healthy for you. It's really good for your insides but you don't have the capability to be able to digest it properly and absorb all those nutrients. So it's just kind of just wasted. It's not, if your body can't absorb all that great food, then, you know, it's not going to have that desired effect. It's just, Hey Hannah, nice to see you. Happy Easter to you too. So basically, you know, it's, a, and, and they talked about success and say, you know, it's not a matter of luck. Think about lottery winners, you know, they will win millions of pounds or dollars and so many lottery winners end up broke and in a worse position that they were in before. So many lottery winners, you see them in the papers all the time, the stories, how they lost everything and they ended up bankrupt. And that's because they don't have um, they don't have this missing ingredient. So they lose everything. So basically, it's not how you do it that's the issue. So as I say, it's about you can learn all the information of the how to's. I could share everything that's worked for me, but it's not that's not going to be the issue. So the how, how you do it is not the issue. <coughs> if you don't change the way that you think, then you won't recognize, you know, so potentially you won't. So if I was to sit down in a room with you for half a day and share everything that's been working for me, then you if you don't um, if you don't change the way you think about that information, then you could probably see that in a very different light the next day. So and then the other kind of example, they talk about why diets don't work. So, you know, obviously you can you can get yourself a gym membership. You could sign up for all these. You could do these crazy diets or whatever you want to do. But they don't necessarily work because, you know, it's not going to be that magic pill that is going to make you, you know, lose 20 pounds or whatever. It doesn't come from just doing a diet and, you know, getting a gym membership. 
so again so if how you do it isn't the answer then what is so what it is it's how you do the how so does that make sense i'll say it again so it's not how you do it it's how you do the how so when i read that i was like okay that's interesting so yeah you could have a list of all the actions that someone's taken that have got them to six figures but it's how you do the house that's what's important so you basically you know you have to do the thing you have to do the thing that it takes like dieting you have to eat better each day you have to do a bit more exercise each week you have to make those small changes that then build up you know i've now lost a stone which is great so it's 14 pounds which is amazing and it's, it's taken me seven eight weeks to do it because it's been those small changes it's been tracking my food reducing my calories doing more exercise really being conscious about what i'm putting in my gob so you know and then over time it's now you know it's working which is great so the missing ingredient i know you're all dying to um susan you're listening to ray higdon no i wasn't no i literally read this this morning why is ray higdon doing something on this as well <laughs> if he is that's very coincidental no literally i'm reading i was reading this this morning when i woke up so i haven't even looked at ray higdon's page so if he's doing the same thing it is complete coincidence but it, it's good that we're on the same wavelength so, so the missing ingredient, who wants to hear what that missing ingredient is? Just give me some likes and loves or just drop a number three in the comments below if you want to know what that missing ingredient is. Come on. <laughs> I'll just sit here and wait. Mm. Universe is telling us something. Yes, definitely, Susan. Okay, so that missing ingredient apparently according to jeff olson from the slight edge to season three, three, three. <laughs> now they're coming awesome um apparently it's your it's the your philosophy which i was like okay well what does that really mean so basically it's your philosophy so it's changing the way that you think about the simple everyday things which i again i was like okay that makes sense why don't we do it you know so basically when you do the steps needed uh sorry when you when you do have a different philosophy and you work on your philosophy your mindset your attitude to those simple everyday tasks that you need to do then what's going to happen is you're then going to do what's what's needed you're going to take those steps that's going to be needed in order to get that success and be able to get those results. So it's your attitude towards the how to's. I mean, I don't know if anybody else kind of is like, wow, okay, because I really was. I was like, okay, that makes total sense. And like, okay, that's definitely something that I need to do because who here is a procrastinator? If anybody here is a procrastinator, I definitely am. You know, there's tasks that I know I should do each day and I put them off and I don't necessarily do them or I'm a bit inconsistent. Um, and now I think I know why. It's because I've got the wrong attitude towards those simple daily tasks. So if any of you feel like that too, then hopefully this is just helping. So so as I say, it's the attitude towards the how to. So those steps, the how to steps, that's what needs to change. But it's not just about motivating to, you know, stop reading my mind. <laughs> um, you know, so it kind of talks about, you know, we can all get motivated. I mean, I love watching, um, I love watching like YouTube videos in the morning to just help get me in a really great mindset and attitude and I'll chuck on some motivational videos or I'll go for a walk around the block in the morning and have some great music on, you know, Tony Robbins is great. And yeah, you feel really, really pumped and really, really excited. And you're like, yes, let's do this. I'm ready for the day. But the problem is, is that those feelings don't last, unfortunately. You know, all day you think how many different changes of thoughts, emotions, everything changes throughout the day. So, you know, you kind of go through this little roller coaster throughout your day and your week with, you know, with life, basically. So the motivation side will only last, you know, it's a very short term thing. So 
it's like yes you can get inspired you can get motivated but you can't you know you can't kind of lock in that feeling and say right i want that feeling to last me for the whole week or even for the whole day would you agree so um <coughs> Yeah, so it's kind of, there's a little example here. It says, you know, so maybe you've decided to get fit today. So you're really excited about doing 20 minutes on a treadmill. Great. But what if tomorrow you don't feel like it? And I think that's quite a common feeling is sometimes we just don't feel like doing stuff. Yeah. So it's that philosophy. That's the missing ingredient. So then it kind of talks about this great sentence, which I really like, which is that, um, you know, so there's this little, which I post the photo of it, there's this little diagram here that says your philosophy creates your attitude, your actions, your results, and that creates your life. So basically, a positive philosophy turns into a positive attitude, which then turns into positive actions, which then turns into positive results which then turns into a positive lifestyle. So it's all this process, but it has to start with that philosophy. That's like the first block. You have that positive, you have that great philosophy towards the actions that you need to take. That's then going to make you feel motivated to do those actions and you'll want to do those actions. And then from doing those actions, you're going to then get results. And that's then going to give you that better business, that bigger success, um, that better life. Yeah. So which is really great. And the same with the opposite. So if you have that negative philosophy, you'll then have negative actions, uh, a negative attitude, which will turn into negative actions, which turns into negative results, which turns into a negative life. So that was really, really great. So it basically just talks about, you know, do the thing and you shall have the power. Um, so that was, again, so it's all about, you know, it's basically then it talks about failure. So, again, if you ever hear about the fact that, you know, you have to fail to succeed, you I pretty much guarantee that you won't hear any big success story. People that have made millions of pounds, six, seven, eight figures, and it will all just go on plain sailing. There would have been some failures along the way. Ray Higdon, Susan mentioned Ray Higdon. He almost lost his house. He was absolutely broke. And then he made that decision. And look at him now. You know, he is he's awesome. He's made it. But he had to have that failure first. And we all have, you know, so it's basically kind of promotes failure because failure isn't failing. It's a, it's always learning. And I used to have a really big thing about failing. You know, it's always that fear of failure. But now I know that, you know, it's to, it doesn't mean that you failed. You just didn't know enough yet. It's a journey. And actually, every time something crappy happens, whether it's in your personal life, in your business life, normally that's the start of when something else great happens. Every time I've had something pretty shit happen, something good has come out of it eventually, you know, after a while. And you don't see it. It's quite hard to see it at the time. You're like, why is the world being a bitch to me? But then two, three months, even six months later, you're like, oh, wow. Oh, OK, now I get it. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had that? Because I definitely have. So it's really just talking about the fact that um, and also coming from a place of service. So I this, I'm just going to leave you with this last little bit because I could probably just carry on. But, you know, I don't want to keep you too long. So this last little bit then just talks about um, where is it? So. Uh, it says there's two prevalent types of attitudes. One is entitled and value driven. Is entitled, yeah, so entitled and value driven. So those are the two different types of attitude. So a value driven attitude says, what can I do to help you? And an entitled attitude says, what have you done for me lately? So it's basically that person that thinks about themselves more and the people that want to help others. And I think especially when you're in network marketing and you're building a team, it's very easy to think about your own goals. You're like, well, I want to rank advance. I want to be promoted. I want to hit this certain goal when it's all about helping your team. It's about helping others reach their goals. And then in return, you will then get yours. So it's all about that kind of attitude so when you have that value so then it says you know an entitled attitude says pay me more and then maybe i'll work harder 
Have you ever thought that? Well, if I only got paid more, maybe I'd work a bit harder or I'd take my business more seriously or something like that. Whereas a value-driven attitude says, I'll work harder and then I, ex I expect you'll pay me more. So that's just a really great kind of way to, to think about that. So it's do the thing and you'll have the power. So, you know, do the tasks, help others, you know, really come from that service and that value place. And then you will get, you know, you will get your results. That will come back to you. So that was just kind of, yeah, that's kind of just what I wanted to say, really, is that, you know, don't be scared of failure. Look at it from, you know, that learning perspective. Go and get this book. I say, I mean, I have barely touched the surface. I mean, I just got so much value out of those first two chapters, which I've literally just given you a snippet of. Um, that I really, you know, go and get it, go on Amazon, whatever. I mean, it's a pretty hefty book. But those first two chapters have really given me like, wow. So I really hope that you found this useful. So it's really about, say, so it's about the attitude. So changing your attitude towards those simple everyday tasks that you need to do in your business. So if you need to go and, um, you know, contact so many people every day, great. How, what does your attitude look like for doing that thing? Do you hate it? If you do, okay, well, why? Um, do you need to post on social media? Do you need to get on the phone with people? Do you need to do you know, whatever your things are? When it comes to network marketing, it's about how, you know, showing people your presentation, connecting with people, um, you know, helping out your team, things like that. A great part of what I do in terms of attract learning, teaching about traction marketing and using online methods is that that prospecting side of things, people reach out to me. So that's a big part of the thing that I hated. I hated prospecting. I hated actively going out to people and saying, hey, I think you'd be great at this business. Are you open to an opportunity? I hated doing that. So I found a way that I didn't have to do that. So my attitude towards prospecting was pretty shitty, was pretty crap. So that's probably why I sucked and I wasn't getting people <laughs> recruiting people. When I learned how to do attraction marketing and I learned how to use online methods and have a system that could bring people, those interested people in, and then I meant I only was talking to interested people, suddenly my attitude changed to prospecting because I took away that pain and I had a great result. So I was then able to have a much better attitude towards it. So hopefully that just kind of helps um, helps you with that. So I say, go and get that book. If you wanna learn about what I was just talking about in terms of having people reach out to you, then just drop a five below and I will message you with a great free training that you can go through. That's exactly what I did. Um, so yeah, I really hope that you found this useful. I've gotta run now to have a meeting Feel free to tag anyone or share this video uh, with anybody else that you think would find it useful. Share, shares are welcomed. Have a fantastic Easter weekend. Enjoy your weekend and the rest of your day. And I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye.